Hi. Hello. So today I want to talk about how much I spent on Genshin and I know this is a bit of a different topic than usual and especially because I'm not going to be using my scripted voice, just a normal voice. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this is that because it's been one year and a half since Genshin was launched and basically a lot of money has been spent on this game. And you know, as someone who is a content creator for this game, I just feel like this topic might be a bit controversial but at the same time I also want to talk about the game in general and how I feel about it after spending so much money on the game. And also at the same time, I just want to talk about the characters I've obtained over the year and a half period in Genshin. And you know, just to make things a bit more interesting, I'm also going to show you one secret team that I've been using for quite a while now. But I think the first thing we want to do is just go over the characters I have on my account. And I'll show you the final amount I've spent on the game so far uh, after I show you the characters. So let's just start from Barbara. As you can see, she's only level 70. Her constellations are obviously all unlocked. I think she was given away so many times, so it's not that hard to get her constellations. Now I think this is where things get a bit more interesting with Amber. So with her, I managed to get three constellations unlocked, but I'm not really using her as a starter character, but you know, that's basically Amber. Now Kaya, I definitely like him. Uh, regarding his constellations, I have the fourth one unlocked, and I can quickly show you how it works. Now Kaya is definitely one of the better characters I've been using for myself for a long time, and the way his shield works is that when he goes down to 20% HP, uh, basically it will activate, so I think it will be enough to just do a plunge attack here to see how the shield works. There we go. So here's the shield. It actually looks pretty cool in, in my opinion. And let's see how much damage he can absorb. <laughs> not a lot. I think it's because these guys are not using cryo attacks, so he's not gonna absorb the damage. Or maybe he did absorb from this guy here. But uh, the other one maybe finished him off. But yeah, that's basically Kaya. He's one of the better free-to-play characters in the game, and you can do a lot of damage with this guy. Now going back here, you can see Chang Yun has six constellations, Diona has six. A funny thing about Goro is that I didn't manage to get him so many times that at the end I got two copies of him at the same time. Now this is where also things get interesting. So Mona is the only character from the standard banner that I have who has six constellations unlocked. And as far as I'm aware, this constellation here isn't really practical, it doesn't really work. I'll probably roll the footage right now and you'll be able to see just how long it takes to do the charge attack. I mean, she's fine, but this last constellation is basically negligible. So it's kind of sad that you unlock the last constellation, but it's not really useful. Because basically you have to like spend 3 seconds doing the underwater dash, and then you gain the whole damage boost to her charge attack. Ah yes, of course, Chi Chi. So she only has 2 constellations unlocked, and I guess you could say it's because Mona is eating up all those 50s 50s but still so for Jean I'm actually kind of happy with her right now and I hope I can get her full constellations maybe in a year so Yenfei basically has been in C3 for quite a while and I think from the latest event I was able to get her fourth constellation just to see how her shield works and her shield actually absorbs a lot of damage so that's pretty cool and as you can see, Beto is at full constellations. And Kuchosara also has six constellations. And I believe this was the only four star character where I managed to spend the money just to keep unlocking the constellations so I can get the final one just to see like how much damage she can deal or how much damage she will be able to provide like. Oh my god, my cat just had a nightmare. Uh, we've had to do like a surgery on him and he had a, like caught some kind of a virus. And I think he's actually kind of doing okay right now. But yeah, I'm not really proud of spending money on Kujo Sara. And this is basically the last time I did this whole thing when I'm getting like full constellations on a 4 star character. Uh, Lily Pichu, or I mean Sayu. I don't I don't believe I spent like Primo Gems just to specifically obtain them. Moving over to some featured 5 stars. We've got first Yoimiya, and she's only at 0 constellations. And I'll probably never get more constellations for her. Kokomi is also at 0 constellations. Now this is actually one of the more surprising cases about Kaching. I didn't get her from the standard banner or 50s 50s. It was actually the featured banner from the last year. Venti and his most useless C1 constellation. Couple of Toma constellations. But here's where I want to talk about Lisa. I managed to get all constellations unlocked and the thing about her last constellation is that it's actually pretty insane. Partially why I wanted to make this video is to showcase you like how much money I had to spend just to get a C6 Lisa indirectly, you know? But basically I do have a team that I've been using for quite a while now. But let's just look at the footage right here where I'm showcasing Lisa. The moment you use her 6th constellation is when you switch to her, where everyone around her gains like maximum stacks of the conductive uh, stacks or whatever you call them. And then you just uh, use her burst and then hold E and the damage can go up as like 60 to 90,000 damage. I mean right now when I'm fighting off these wolves, obviously they have like reduced uh, electro resistance, but the damage is still kind of insane when you're using her. And the rotation is actually pretty natural as well. But yeah, that's basically Lisa for you. 
Yunjin, yeah, she has three constellations. Now, the Luke is someone that I occasionally bring out just to do some world quests. I actually like him a lot. He's just such a vanilla character, such a fond memory to have about like the initial days of Genshin. Now, for the rest of the five stars, like Klee, Hu Tao, uh, Tartalia or Child, Ayaka, Ganyu, you can see that they don't really have too many constellations. I mean, only Hu Tao and Klee only has one constellation unlocked. Uh, the same could be said about Shenha. I also really like her, so I got the first constellation. But I generally never go above this. You know, you can see this with Xiao, with uh, even Kazuha. Like, I don't have any constellations, and I'm not even planning to get them. Zhongli, I think, was the case where the game just released him, and I think I literally got double Zhongli from a single, like, ten pull. But then, for example, with Arataki Ito, I decided to get the first constellation, but I kind of regret it. It already makes it easier to build his stacks, so it kind of takes away from the whole fun mechanic he has landing combos and trying to build those stacks efficiently so I kind of regret getting the first constellation. Finally Yai Miko at zero constellations and now I want to talk about the two last characters where I actually spent the most primo gems or you know money basically. So first started with Albedo he has two constellations unlocked and the second constellation got unlocked on his rerun and I could start giving like valid reasons why I did this and you know maybe because I want to make a guide but the reality is I just really like him and after him basically there was only one character left. Now, the reason why I got Raiden Shogun to three constellations is that I wanted to feel the experience of having like a C6 character. Getting her third constellation, even the second one, basically turns her into like a completely maxed out character. She makes farming content like so easy you cannot even imagine. I mean, it's easy when you get to a certain point with your account, and it's definitely not necessary to have it. Uh, the last thing I want to look at is actually the equipment, because basically I still don't have a lot of them. Like for example, Summit Shaper was skipped, uh, Freedom Sworn, which actually is kind of insane with Kazuha. I also don't have Vortex Vanquisher because why would I need it? Uh, Calamity Queller was actually kind of on the fence of getting it, but then I realized with Shenha it's basically enough to just have a Favonius Lance on her and she's fine, so. Memory of Dust is also something that's uh, just unimportant for me. Uh, Kagura's Verity just recently uh, was released together with Ai Miko and I just skipped it because you have Witsith, uh, you have like Solar Pearl, I mean it's obviously really good for Lisa and Ai Miko. And then finally there's also Polar Star missing. I mean it's a cool bow but I have so many bows like I, I just don't really want to use it. But I think it's time we take a look at the actual spendings. Again, I'm not proud of it, but also at the same time it was a necessity because each time I have to like spend money to acquire the character, maybe also spend money to acquire the signature weapon, but yeah, for now let's just look at the amounts I've spent. So, as you can see at the, at the start of the game, I think this was basically like the first stake when Genshin started, and it was the battle pass I acquired, day one. But like in a couple of days I started noticing that the traffic for my video started to pick up, so I said like, okay, let's just spend a little bit more just just to see like if we can get venti at the time but then this one here is obviously and when you look at this amount like this is 110 euros so 110 euros is about it's 121 dollars just to get the biggest primo gem pack and you know this is crazy because uh, literally in so many countries especially like united states the pack costs only 99 dollars so i had to spend like 22 extra dollars just to get one of those biggest packs and it's such a bad deal for me i think they recently fixed it i don't know i don't know how long ago but but I think it's now 99 euros per the biggest package. But yeah, then moving over, like, a lot of transactions started to happen, like, you know, because first of all, the account was missing so many four stars, so many five stars. But clearly, right here is the biggest spending spree, like, Jesus. Uh, the spending didn't really subside, like, it just kept repeating itself. Like, it's, it's basically a trend at this point. And yeah, I think this is where it started to become a bit less money. So I started using like uh, different services like Razor Gold, I think. And it, by the way, this is not sponsored, but like I started using like different services to just uh, grab those uh, Primo Gym deals for a bit cheaper because this is insane. Like, you know, like coming back to it, like 110 euros is so much. So I think it's time we take a look at the final spendings in the game. So basically starting with 2020 and this puts us at 2000 euros and 2000 euros is about $2,245. So like in three months I spent so much, but if I still remember correctly, I didn't have ka -ching. It's hard to believe it, but yeah, at one point I still didn't have Mona, and I think I even posted like on Twitter when I obtained her for the first time. Then moving over into a whole year of 2021, I spent only 1,500 more than three months combined. The rhythm of the summonings became like, just get the featured 5-star characters, maybe their weapons, and in dollars, that's about almost $4,000. 
But here's where things get a bit more interesting with 2022. So it's almost three months just like in 2020. And believe it or not, I only spent 334 euros, or in other words, $370. Probably a bit more, maybe I'm missing one transaction, maybe it's $100 more, but it's definitely less money I spend right now than compared to the last two years. And yeah, the total amount right now is about 6,000 euros or about $6,600. So when you take all of this into account and realize I spent almost $7,000 on this game and I'm still missing so much. But again, this is only possible because I am a content creator. I would never, never spend this much money on a game. But again, I just wanted to talk about my account in general because I feel like if I'm making guides, I wanna be transparent, like how strong is my account? And really, I'm just thankful that you guys keep watching my videos and supporting me all this time because I've been dealing with so much stuff in my personal life for a couple of months now. And I really appreciate it. You guys keep showing me support and I can still keep working on these videos and I can still see a lot of nice comments from you. But the moral of the story, at least in this video and from my own personal perspective, is that you should not be spending so much money unless, first of all, you're extremely financially stable or second of all, this is your job, basically. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm kind of a little bit disappointed in myself in spending so much money on Genshin, but at the same time it did provide me an extremely rare opportunity to become a content creator for this game. So again, thank you for so much support you've been showing to my channel. And again guys, thanks for watching the video and see you soon.